What's up guys, Xbox Tech Jokey back today with another video. Today we're going to be discussing the Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2. Now, like I said, we're going to be getting another Elite Controller. I mean, I said it last year at, for last year's E3, but, you know, better late than never, so. Anyway, yes, we did finally get a reveal for the Elite Series 2, so I'm super excited to talk about it. Um, I love the Series 1, so let's just jump right into it. So first things first, this is not the Series 2, obviously this is the Series 1, but I'm going to use it as a nice little placeholder for now just to talk about the newer changes that are coming to it and some of the stuff that kind of stayed, which I'm excited for. Uh, so let's just talk about it. So the first thing that's kind of a major difference is going to be the grip. So on the Series 1, you can see that the rubberized grip is only on the back handles. Now with the newer series, is they decided to bring that entire grip all the way around to the front of the controller or the front uh, handles. Which is kind of nice because for some people who have like their palms super sweaty, um, it's kind of hard to keep that grip on, especially with how this material is. Um, I personally have never had any issues with it, but I'm excited to try out the new grip and see how that feels. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The next thing, more grip. Uh, so they're adding actual grip uh, details right here on the triggers, which is kind of cool. So um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's more like a bumpy, scaly look type that are going right here on the center of the triggers. Um, it's pretty cool because I've always never really noticed how much my finger does slip until I've like kind of toyed with it. You know, if you're shooting a lot or if you're doing driving games, um, you know, after a while your fingers just start to slip. So that grip is really gonna help out a lot with games like Forza or any other racing games you do. Or if you're playing a lot of first person shooters, maybe having that extra grip will help with your trigger finger and everything. Uh, but I really love the amount of grip that they're putting into these controllers and they did say that they did work on uh, Making these grips and bumpers more durable, which is a lot of problems that this series had for a lot of people uh, Many people were complaining that their grips were starting to come off One of my friends actually his grips a little destroyed and it's coming off And I think mine's starting to too because it's starting to bubble up in certain areas So kind of glad they're making a series too because I think this thing's finally reached it's finally four years old roughly so I think it's finally gonna reach its uh, deathbed, but we still love it. The next big thing about it is the battery. So there will no longer be this, you know, just opening it up and replacing your batteries. It is now an internal battery pack. And the nice thing about it though, is they did promise that it has up to 40 hours of charge. Um, so that means, you know, you can go 40 hours of just playing through, no problems. Uh, one thing I don't understand though is, well, I guess I should jump into how it's being charged. So there is a port on the back on the new one that you just set it down into the case actually, and you can charge it just like that. So like you just sit on it and it would charge. Uh, with that, there's also a new USB type C port. So no longer having to figure out which way it goes in. Um, micro USB on these controllers, I've always had a problem with putting them in for some weird reason why they just don't tend to like to be in the controller. Uh, but USB type C is coming to this controller. Another nice thing is about the case is you can still charge it even if you don't want to um, have the case open or anything. There's a little uh, port on the back of the case that you just open up and put the charger in and you're good to go. But my biggest issue or concern that I have is they gave no clear indication how to, like, how to know if it's completely charged. I mean, your biggest way is just turning the controller on and then looking at your TV screen and seeing what the Xbox says about it. But I really wish that it would have had like um, some sort of indicator, like maybe on the case or on the battery pack, it gives you like a red light for charge and green light for uh, completely charged and done. So I'm wondering how they're gonna do that, if they're even gonna show us any way of knowing it's completely charged. If not, we're just gonna have to set it down and pray to God it charges completely. Now, the next big feature would be the new hair lock triggers. So if you look right here on the series one, you know, there's two hair lock triggers. So if you want like a normal trigger where you can go completely down, you would have it up. But if you want a shorter spam, then you would just pull the trigger, or the little hairlock trigger down, and then next thing you know, it's a much less uh, squeeze to shoot or do whatever you're doing with it. Um, so you can kind of see the difference. I'm going completely down here and only roughly down here. So I don't know if you can see that completely, but that's what it would look like. Now the newest controller has three modes now. So instead of it just being one, two, one, two, now it has one, two, and three. So one would be our basic one, Two would be probably where this guy's at right now, and I would guess the third one is now even shorter. So it's like almost as if you're barely even pushing that trigger down, which is kind of helpful for games like Halo. Um, I shoot a lot with the Halo triggers because, you know, using a DMR or a pistol or a battle rifle, this is really helpful. But there is times that even though I'm using this, there's still people who are getting shots out faster than I am. 
Um, so maybe with that, I can get some better and quicker shots in. With that, there is also a new thing called uh, adjustable tension thumbsticks. Now, basically what this means is you can take this guy off and adjust these thumbsticks in any different ways you want. So if you've never noticed that the 360 controller had a very different tension when it came to the uh, thumbsticks than the Xbox One series has, and a lot of people have complained about that over the years. Xbox is now allowing you to simply put in a little key, turn it once or twice, whatever you're um, comfortable with, and fix the tension on this so you have a little more fine tuning and it could be a little more precise for you. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna toil around with that a lot, especially with games like Forza. Uh, the D-pad is still the exact same. You'll take this off, get the disc one and pop it in there. Um, if you were at E3, hopefully you were one of the people to get the E3 exclusive uh, D-pad. If not, I'm sorry, but it's already gone. Uh, the next big thing is gonna be this. So right here in the middle, you can see there is a switch. Now, for those people who don't know, that switch allows you to change uh, two different presets. So for example, on my Halo 5 Guardians controller, this button up here is my thrusters, and this button down here is my jump. And basically what that means is if I switch over this to like a Gears of War preset, this can now be my crouch and this could be something else. So basically the presets allow you to have two different controller schemes on one controller. The new controller is now adding in just a simple button with three lights in the middle and you just simply push that and the light, whichever preset you're on currently, that will light up. So you go one, two, three bars. It's three bars, you're on the third one. Two bars on the second one, one bar on the first one, etc. cetera. Um, now that's kind of cool because uh, last year when they leaked or there was rumored about this controller, there was a big rumor about a light going right here. So that's pretty cool that it kind of stayed. Sorry, it's right here. I'm just looking at the picture of it right now. Uh, it's right here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the last, not really a big feature, I guess, is the controller will be uh, backwards compatible. And not in terms of saying this is gonna work on your Xbox 360. I mean, when Project Scarlet or whatever the next Xbox is gonna be called, this will be backwards compatible for the Xbox One. And I guess I should really say this will be forward compatible because it's coming out for the Xbox One. So yes, if you're kind of on the bench about buying this because of next year's big Xbox X console, this controller will work on the Scarlet. Okay, no, not this one, but the Series 2 will work on the Scarlet because it does utilize Bluetooth. That means it can work on your Xbox One family consoles and your Windows 10 uh, computers and uh, devices. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Uh, but yes, definitely get one if you really want one, especially if you're planning on buying Project Scarlet. It's going to work for it. Um, you're only going to see probably a big difference between the controllers, only because it's a new controller. But as always with Xbox controllers, the scheme really never changes. Uh, we'll always have A, B, X, Y, diagonal, thumbsticks, D-pad, power button. Uh, the only thing I can really see changing that will be major to the controller would be how this button works right here. Um, but that's about it. I would say everything on this controller that you see right now, even just on the Series 1, is going to be almost the exact same on the 360, or sorry, this Project Scarlet. Because if you look at the 360 controller, the changes weren't major, the crazy between the two controllers. Like, setup is almost the exact same. Now, yeah, there's different innards making it work better, but the controller itself looks almost the exact same, just a little chunkier, and I think, in my opinion, a little better. So... Just to wrap up real quick, we're gonna talk about what you get inside the box once you get the controller. Now, it's probably gonna be very similar to what it was like when I got this controller. Um, typically, you're gonna get the controller, obviously. You'll get all four of the paddle shift, or sorry, the paddles that you can use. Um, hairlock triggers are built in. You're gonna get different types of thumbsticks, big ones, dome ones, and the medium sized ones, or I guess the standard type. Uh, you'll get two D-pads, you'll get the regular cross D-pad, and then you'll get the disc D-pad, which is good for gaming or fight games. Um, you'll get the carrying case, obviously, so if you like to take care of your babies, you can throw them in the case, zip it up, and walk around with it. Uh, you'll get the charging pad that is inside the case, so you'll just put it down on there, good to go. Uh, you'll also get the USB Type-C charger, so I mean... For most people who probably own Samsung or any device that isn't Apple currently, uh, you could probably already have your own USB Type-C, but the controller will ship with one, so don't worry about it. Uh, you'll also get the thumb adjustment tool, so you'll be able to turn that in there and change the tension on those guys. Uh, but yeah, so you pretty much get everything in the box. Microsoft isn't holding you back. They're not going to be like, well, if you want the thumbstick, 
or yeah, the thumbstick key, you're gonna have to pay an extra five bucks for that. No, completely everything in the box, this controller is ready to go once it is opened and synced to your con uh, console. Uh, last little thing is it will still utilize a nice US, uh, sorry, 3.5 millimeter jack. So if you're one of those guys who doesn't like to use the Xbox controller or just wanna use the uh, headphone jack, it's still there. Before I do end though, the Series 2 controller is gonna be out on November 4th of this year and it's gonna be priced for $179.99. So it's about 30 bucks more uh, than the Series 1. So I mean, if you still wanna to try to get an Elite controller but don't wanna spend 180, uh, this controller is still able to be purchased at other places like GameStop, Walmart, maybe Best Buy. Uh, currently they are still pricing it at full price of $150. So it's completely up to you if you wanna spend the extra 30 and get the newer controller or spend 150 and get this guy. Either one really works. I really love the Series 1. Um, a lot of people have had issues with it uh, falling apart or having bumper issues. I've seen people return it to my store and there was just bumpers everywhere. The grip was already peeled off. So, I mean, this one does have its issues, but for me personally, it is a really good controller and I've had no issues with it. Um, but again, extra $30, you get the Series 2 controller, which is supposed to be more durable and a lot better. So. Yeah, but that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm excited for this controller. I will be doing an unboxing video for it when it comes out in November. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching.